And so here we are. The Irish Sea. The start of the coast to coast. It's tradition and I think it's a lovely sort of romantic idea that you, uh, you just dip your toes in this side and pick up a pebble or a stone and carry it across. Dip your toes in the North Sea and throw your stone in. <laughs> I like that. So that's what I'm going to do. Uh, and then we'll crack on because um, due to work and stuff I've not it's gone 5 p.m. now so our first campsite might be in a bus shelter <laughs> or on a sports field or something but hey ho we'll see where it takes us that's part of the adventure we don't really have a set route planned because we're wild camping so let's dunk our feet and grab some stones and then we'll head we'll head off there you go the Irish Sea uh. we'll take these big one that's for granddad and then a couple of stragglers as well for my own personal reasons but let's go the next time we'll see them hopefully We'll be in the North Sea. Oh, I'm here. I'm off here. Nice one, Alfred. I better stop mucking about and crack on that. Artie. I've got to get some miles in. It's half five now. We say goodbye to St. B's. Uh, and the first sort of set of woodland is 11 miles away. We'll have to see. <laughs> see if we can make that before nightfall. Um, otherwise, as soon as it starts getting dark, we'll just sleep wherever. We might have to uh, we might have to rough it in one of the villages or towns because it's a bit um, it's a bit urbanised at the beginning of this walk apparently. Well, we can find a sports field or a graveyard or something and get tucked in. Shout out, Big Mick! I can't really see that. Shout out Jimmy, big Jims. I'll film this bit because um, <clears throat> I'm going past these heifers and they've got little babies with them. So hopefully I don't end up a statistic. <laughs> that suck. Trampled. Trampled by a cow. Is that really how it ends for me? Oh. I'm coming past, don't worry. Just coming past, I give you a wide berth. Wide berth. That's it, I don't want any beef. No pun intended. See you later. All the best. <laughs> All right, mate. Done ya. One nil. <laughs> cool lighthouse. I wasn't even worried. No, there, because I've done it in the past where uh, like a cow's charged me. Um, it was like a male bull has run straight to me and I've just whoosh, 
I've laid the nut on and he's just crumpled. I had to pay for him. I killed him, obviously. I had to pay farmer. <laughs> Expensive headbutt. <sighs> right, we're heading inland now. You can see in the distance the hills and fells of the Lake District. Right, nearly there, just 184 miles to go. See, this is how they used to do it, look. Wooden stick, heavy as wool hat on, canvas, big old boots. Uh, never mind, oh, never mind 800 gram tents, <laughs> therm arrests. Softy. See if I can get to the 11 mark, 11 mile mark, and get into them woods. Uh, even if I have to just set up in the dark with my flash, with my headlight on, that's fine. Managed to get just past the 11 mile mark, which is not bad going. <sighs> Considering when I set, set off, set off quite late, set off about half five, which is unconventional. <laughs> but we're wild camping, so it doesn't really matter. And I managed to get up to some high ground out of the little villages and uh, rewarded with a lovely, a lovely sunset. The main path's just there, up, get up the side of that wall. So I've just come in a little bit. Uh, and I'll be getting up uh, really early in the morning and heading off so no one's gonna see me. There we are. Gotta get my airbed and that in there, but you don't need to see that. <laughs> There's plenty of time to see that. Beautiful. What time is it? It's nearly nine o'clock, so we're gonna get bed set up, get some tea on, and get some snooze. Uh, air my socks out, air my feet out. Right, not a bad campsite. So we started here in St. Bees. We walked up and walked along the coast. Then we cut in past sand width through these fields over the railway to Moor Row, and it was all sort of built up um, urban areas, and then Cleetor through here. And this was where I was aiming to get to, that's my 11 mile mark there. That's the 11 mile mark I was, at, I was aiming for. Um, so I hit that and got out of the town and then I've come up here to the top through this plantation and up here, Dent. <laughs> and that's where I am now, which is about 11 and a half miles, which isn't bad. We're playing catch up because I was supposed to get into bit St. B's at 12 but I got in at sort of 5 or something daft. So we're playing catch up but it doesn't really matter. I'm not I don't, I'm not beholden to any times. I wanted to do it in sort of 9 days uh, but I'm putting no pressure on. We're just going to see how we go. The plan is to start really early so I'll get up at 6 and start walking about half six um, till about eight, till it gets dark again. So long days, but I'll just take my time and smell the roses, so to speak. The midges are out in force, which is something that I didn't, I was hoping I'd avoid them, but they're out. So I think the next village I get to, I'm gonna have to get some midge repellent. So the reason 
the reason behind this walk or the motivation behind this walk um, is my granddad who did it in the 70s um, mid to late 70s I think when it wasn't so popular back then um, not as popular as it is now anyway so much so that he uh, <laughs> even got in the Whitby Gazette him and his mate who he did it with his version his version of Joey D probably yeah, him and his friend got in the Whitby Gazette for doing it so it was a big deal back then like to get in a paper even though it is a local paper you, you just wouldn't it just wouldn't happen now uh, and it was back when you know it was big wool socks canvas bags uh, the boiling the bag rain coats and stuff you know there's no there was no ultra light camping or hiking back then um and he smashed it and it's um yeah i've always wanted to do it since you know since finding out he did it and once i got into hiking and camping and stuff and uh, i told him i was going to do it and he gave me his old wainwright book it's one of the old wainwright books that are all handwritten by Wainwright himself and and my granddad has uh, sort of jotted down little bits and pieces of his own journey um, just the prices back then man just like uh, staying in the Red Bull and I can't remember what it was it was something like four four to six quid for dinner bed and breakfast <laughs> or something ridiculously cheap anyway and he's made little notes he's made like notes of the weather and and things like that in it so uh, when he found out that I was going to be doing the walk he gave me that and a load of old photos of him doing the walk himself which pretty cool so yeah that's that's my inspiration really to do it to follow in his footsteps but I'm gonna do it wild camping and I'm doing it on my own That sky, man, look at it. <sighs> the temptation to like, to do night lapses and time lapses and stuff is quite great, but batteries <laughs> and battery power is very minimal and I don't know when I'll get a chance to charge them. So I have to refrain unless it's an absolutely amazing sky which it should be because it's a it's only a slip of a moon tonight I think so it'll be dark skies we'll see if I've buckled then this will probably <laughs> it'll probably cut to a time lapse <laughs> So I'll see you on the morrow. It's a beautiful morning. The uh I uh, slept well, I was comfortable. There's no condensation at all. I pitched this front bit quite high, so we've got a good breeze through. <laughs> breakfast, right, let me show you the breakfast routine. I have, uh, I knocked up this uh, big bag of oats. It's got um, oats. Cinnamon, goji berries, chai seeds, uh, aco root, all sorts of weird and wonderful things in there. Uh, and so what I do is I put it in the 900 milliliter pot with some water overnight and cold soak it uh, and you get you know, yeah. And then it's all hydrated and ready to go. 
That's the goji berries all plump and the chai seeds on top. That way I know that one of these bottles, when I get to camp I just need one of these bottles does me my tea, does a um, adventure meal and it does this for the morning and gives a little, a couple of mouthfuls for brushing the teeth. So that is the, that's the least I need. I need that, at least one of them when I set up camp. So I don't even need to rev the gas up. That's just been, that's just cold soaked. Overnight oats, you know who you are. Right, it's 7 a.m. I've packed up, I've walked to the top of this hill. And we're just about to go over the top of it, so. That's our last view of the Irish Sea. So long, sucker. There's two options, there's two ways to go here. And I'm gonna go, I think I'm gonna go through the woodland, try and find some water. It says there's some water on there. Uh, purify some water, fill these bottles up, and uh, wash my pot. Yeah. And then we're all done, we're all, everything's back, everything's reset and ready to go. So I've come through uh, Ennerdale Bridge. Uh, yeah, I've come through Ennerdale Bridge. There's a lovely little sort of community-owned cafe there. So I just um, quick coffee and then batting on. This is Ennerdale Water. It looks so inviting. A bit rocky underfoot. Ooh. I mean, it's a bit ambitious, but I'm I'm going to try and make it to Grasmere today, which all told will be about I don't know, 26 miles, something like that. <laughs> to either Grasmere or just before Grasmere so we can get a wild camping. But this is a stunning part of the walk along, uh, along the side of Ennerdale Water. Right, that's Ennerdale Water done. Shout out, where are they? <laughs> Shout out them to American man them. said I should slow down. <laughs> I says no. I'll slow down when I'm old like you, sunshine. <sighs> Alright lads, I don't want any trouble. Oh. Alright mate. Now then. Oh. Little Ben. See you later. He's coming straight at me. Ah, oh, you've bottled it. Right, I'm off in here and it's, it's, there's a lot of them. I'm outnumbered. Don't be afraid guys, because the truth of the matter is, if you lot all just worked in unison and that got a bit of a hive mentality, you could kick the living shit out of me. All of you. Even all you little black units. I think that's a UFOS to work and get some water and whatnot. Water and whatnot. It's tiny and it's the only thing for miles. I feel a little bit of a hot spot 
on my right foot, so I'm just gonna sling some Vaseline over it. Uh, and if it keeps persisting, I've got some uh, Compi uh, blister plasters. Right, like sail Euphostal, just patching my feet up. Having a bite to eat and a rest. Look at this place, it's lovely. There's the uh, summit of Has Great Gable. So we've just walked up there. Pretty steep. The wind's picking up a bit now. I'm quite thankful for it. Honester Slate Mine. Christian Slater. I'm done. Seven o'clock. Twelve hours we've been at it. We've done over twenty miles, which isn't too bad considering the the terrain. Just got the old socks drying out, my feet drying out. They're a bit of a mess. Um, yeah, and I found the only flat bit in this whole valley. <laughs> so I thought instead of pushing to get to the top and breaking myself, I thought we'll just get bed down on this flat bit where I know it's flat. The path's there. That bit of stone just there is the path. <laughs> but I'm not going to pitch up till late and then I'll uh, I'll set off early in the morning before all the uh, fat bags get up and going. <sighs> lovely skies. It's going to be another lovely sunset. That's tonight's setup. Uh, not bad. <laughs> Look, well, there's a path here, and this is the path I'm following. Up onto the tops tomorrow. But because it's so late, I'm just there, right next to the path. But it's a beautiful, it's a flat spot in amongst all this hilly stuff. I've pitched it quite well. It's uh, There's a bit of a gap un underneath. As you can see, I don't want any condensation. Oh yeah. Right, I slept here last night, which was about 11 and a half miles in. And so, rah, went down here, you can choose to go this way or this way, I went over the top. And then, down here is where I um, filled my water bottles up in this stream. Some of the names, dude, look, I mean, listen to this. Nanny Cat, Nanny Catch, Nanny Catch Beck. Perfect. So English, Scaly Moss, Neathwaites. Lovely names. Um, we walked along here to Ennerdale Bridge.
over to Ennerdale Water. This was a lovely bit of walk along here. Absolutely stunning past Robin Hood's chair. The views were just breathtaking. And then I kept going. Crossed over, there's an option here. Um, you can take the high the high road um, or you can go through the woodland and I chose to go through the woodland just to save my knees and my feet because uh, I was getting a hot spot for a blister at that point. So we continue through to the lovely black sail hut. Which was just a little sort of, there was a little honesty box for brews and stuff like that. Didn't use it, I'd be on stuff. And then this here was a huge climb up. Really steep climb up there to the slate quarry. Then down to Honister, um, where there's a, there's a youth hostel and a little cafe and stuff here. And then carried on, carried on into Rothwaite. That's where a lot of people camp. Um, this was around the 20 mile mark for me, and then I just I thought, well, we'll get out of here and we'll put some. How many miles did I do then? Only a couple more miles, and I am there just past all the campsites and stuff so I get a bit of a head start on everyone in the morning if anyone's thinking of doing it in the morning and that's that I think it was about 20 20 miles 22 miles something like that but oh the, the, the terrain was tough man it's so good to lie down in the tent man I am going to uh, sleep with the door open. Just ogle at it. Oh man, I'm exhausted. It'd be good. It's good though. Let's get some snooze because it's an early start tomorrow. It's 15 miles. It's what, it's 6 miles to Grasmere, then it's 15 miles to Patterdale. Obviously, we're going to try and get to Patterdale and beyond it. If we can get to Patterdale. Um, get some more supplies, need some more food and um, bits and pieces and then that's 15 miles and then just see if we can do an extra few up into the hills and get to Angle Tarn and we'll maybe have a camp fingers crossed, we'll see how the feet hang up and we'll see see what the day brings but for now it's night night <laughs>